Hey, what's up everyone, and welcome to the second video in the Low Polygon Asset Design course. In this video, I'm going to go over two different methods for texturing your model. The first method is the longer, more standard method for texturing a model. The second method will be at the very end of the video and will be very short, and that method will focus on the material only based method that is very useful for these low polygon, single colored objects. Let's get started. Now, typically you're always working in quads, but in this scenario where we're working on this low polygon model, we're gonna go ahead and cut into tries now. And the reason for that is, whenever you work on a model and you're working in quads the entire time, or even larger than quads, and you bring that FBX into Unity or Unreal Engine 4, it'll go ahead and it'll cut tries for you, okay? And that's not really a big deal when you have these flat planes that are set into quads or, or even larger than quads because it doesn't matter. No matter how the engine cuts it, they're still flat faces, so they're still going to appear flat. In our scenario, we are working on this low polygon model that has these triangles all over the place and these triangles are at different angles and that's kind of a part of what makes it look organic. So in this scenario, we want to go ahead and cut into tries now so that we're aware of what those tries will look like, okay? Because they might not necessarily look the best based on the way that the Unreal Engine 4 or Unity decides to cut them for us. So we're gonna cut them now in advance and set them up exactly how we think they look the best. So the way we do that is we make sure we're in edit mode, and we are, and we will go ahead and just press A to select everything, and Control T will go ahead and cut those tries for us, okay? now. We're going to notice right off the bat that we probably have, uh, because of the way that we've merged things with Union, um, that we're going to have a couple things that, you know, are just not necessary. Like right here we have two verts next to each other with this small triangle. Totally unnecessary, runs all the way down. That's going to cause issues with our light map and it just generally doesn't look good. So we'll go ahead and we'll select these two and we're going to hit Alt-M and we're just going to merge them. Uh, at the center because it really doesn't matter we're going to be keeping everything in tries here and this is already how the tries are going to look and we'll go ahead and render this in a second so we can see uh, another thing we see here is like this face here that's got this cut right through it now that just creates a bunch of additional tries we don't really need so one way we can flatten this triangle out and make this a whole single triangle is by pressing control tab selecting edge and grabbing all the edges that connect here and that are you know you notice that they have a union here and that's actually slicing you know you have one two three four triangles um, so if we just remove this edge here then we have a problem because we have a vertice that's cutting into the center of um, another larger triangle and that just doesn't make sense to the engine or to really any renderer okay so we're going to remove both of them so we'll just hit delete after selecting them both and we'll do dissolve edges now that'll give us a flat face here and a flat face here okay we're going to do the same thing here, hit delete, dissolve edges. We'll also come over here, do the same thing, delete, dissolve edges. And another thing we have going on is we have this face kind of hanging out over our branch here. That doesn't necessarily look good. So what we're going to do here is we will just come up here. We're going to hit control tab and go into vertex and we'll bring those two together. So at last and we have brought those two together. It's got a little bit of randomness to it and that's good, we want that. Um, but what we don't want is, you know, things like this that are gonna cause problems for us. So if we come up here, we see there's another issue here. We can come back to edge and we'll grab these two. We can hit delete, dissolve edges. Um, technically we do need this one here, okay, to make that into a try. But one thing we could do is take this vert here and here and bring that to the last and now we've gotten rid of that unnecessary cut we could do the same thing here hit alt m at last and we probably want to keep this one here because that's kind of what brings that branch out and gives it that angle okay so we'll keep that one there keep that whole face but we can go ahead and get rid of that one by pressing alt m and doing at last because i selected this vertice last bringing it there and everything here looks pretty good. I don't see anything that doesn't make sense. And because we've cut it into tries, we now know what these triangles will look like when they're brought into the engine. 
Now what we're going to do is we will go ahead and render this real quick and we'll just do this simply by going to rendered mode. Coming up here to the world setting and we'll just come down and turn environmental lighting so we can get a good look at what we have going on here. And I think this looks, you know, very organic. It's got like a uniqueness to it. We have some triangles in there for some lighting to bounce off of, which is nice. And we have some differences in the branches. And we've also cleaned up all the stuff that we don't necessarily need. Now, when you're creating a texture, you can pretty much use any image editing software that you want. You could use GIMP, which is free. Uh, or you could use Photoshop, or in this case, you see I'm using Adobe Illustrator. Again, like I said, it really doesn't matter. Uh, what's really important to do is just stick to the power of two, which is making sure that you always have a square for your texture. And the reason for that, most people don't know, but is because older hardware and GPUs could not really render anything that wasn't, you know, to the power of two. That was kind of essential back in the day. Really not super important now, but it's just good to stick to that rule of thumb and just go to the power of two with all your textures. Okay, and the other thing here is this image is going to be set up to be a 16 by 16 pixel. And the reason it can be so small is because we're going to be exporting this as a PNG. And these solid colors here, PNG is a lossless image quality, and so it's not going to lose any information here in the center. It will along these edges here, so we're going to make sure that we stick away from those when we do apply our UV mapping. And we'll stay here nice in the center. But here in the center where there's no colors colliding with each other, we're going to have a nice perfect color. And so really it doesn't matter how big or how small we put our UVs in here. It doesn't matter that this is 16 by 16 pixels. And because we're doing these solid colors like we are, it allows us to really optimize our game and have these small images for our UV textures. I will provide a link to this image so you can just grab it offline and use it in your own project, especially for following this tutorial. That way you don't have to go ahead and create such a simple asset right now. But I do recommend that you either practice doing so or figure out how to do so in a software that you will be comfortable with. And so what we'll do is we'll just save it out as a PNG and I've already done so. And back in Blender we are now going to create our UV map so that we can apply that texture to it. Now the first thing we want to do is right down here in Blender you'll see that there's this little tab that lets you draw out a new window. So we're going to drag out a new window and we are going to go to UV Image Editor. Okay, now from UV Image Editor, what we can do is we can just drag and drop our texture in here. And as you can see, we now have our texture in and we can start working with it. Technically, there's two ways we could go about this. Because we're just using solid colors like we are, it's not really imperative that we do a proper seam marking for our UV. Uh, so what we could do is we, we could just select everything, hit U, and do a smart UV project and apply that image to it. We don't really want to do that because it's not the appropriate way to practice doing this. Most of the time, pretty much every scenario, you're going to want to learn or know how to do your own unwrap. And the reason for that is if you were going to apply like some wood texture to this, uh, you know, for a little bit of realist realism or like some leaves texture to this, you would want to have a proper seam. And the reason is, is because the seam is where that texture collides with itself. And if you didn't have a proper seam, if you had some goofy stuff, you would have all these weird images happening and, and colliding with each other in different ways. And so you need to have this proper seam where you can kind of mitigate, you know, as much as you can of where that's going to happen. And so what we'll do is we'll just practice doing that. Okay. Because this is a basics course and it's important to uh, learn things the right way and do things the right way as much as possible. So we're going to start off by marking our seam. And the best way to think of a seam is basically if you were making this tree out of paper and most of it was just one sheet, technically you would have to be wrapping that tree up and, and seaming it somewhere, putting it back together. Like this is where your tape would be essentially to hold your little paper mache tree trunk together. All right. So that's how we try to imagine it. With marking seams, it can be trial and error and it, it takes some practice to really get used to doing. And the best way to do that is just to jump right in and start doing it, okay? And if you make a mistake, to just see where the issue is over here and try and fix it. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have edges here. And we're going to just start marking a seam. And we'll move up along the trunk here. And we'll move into the center. And because, you know, good practice, we would hide our seam as much as possible we're going to hide them inside here, like so. All right. 
and we'll come up here. Actually, we'll get rid of that. We'll go right there with a straight shot. That one goes all the way up. All right, and now we need to separate these branches from the tree. So we're going to mark this all the way around. We're going to do the same with each one of these. And a couple more here. Just make sure those are all good, and they are. And we have a cut that comes all the way down the trunk. Okay, so this is how it would wrap around. And we have this cut here, and that's going to let this piece here kind of peel out separate from it. And then we have seams running up each branch on the inside, and that lets them open up as well. Okay. Now, we're also going to mark a seam on our canopy, okay, because it also needs to peel open as well. So we'll just do our seam just like that. We'll leave this side intact and that'll keep all this together. This is like cutting open the paper and this, you know, these two pieces will essentially just kind of peel out away from each other, okay? And so what we do is we're just gonna hit, after we have the seam selected, we're gonna hit Control E and then we'll go right here to Mark Seam. Okay, and that gives you these red lines. Now the reason we have it marked around here is because the canopy is going to be green, this is going to be brown obviously, and so these are going to have to go on different parts of our UV map over here, alright? So they have to be separated, and that marking of that seam there allows us to essentially cut this away from the canopy. It'll, it lets them be two separate pieces, so they need to have a perfect seam that goes all the way around everywhere that that's connected to cut it out from it. And now that we've marked it, we can hit A again, select everything, U, and we're gonna say unwrap, all right? And now what that does is it unwraps both of these, and we can see here that we have everything nice and smooth. It's always important to check. There's no overlapping UVs. Not really a big deal for this because we're gonna have a separate UV for a light map. Light map's very important that you don't have overlapping uh, UVs where here it's not such a big deal. All right, and so these are nice looking. These are actually really good, they work fine. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna choose our tree texture. If you didn't already drop your texture in, then you could just drag and drop it in right now and it would drop these right on top of it. But we're just gonna choose that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come down here and we're gonna make sure if you don't already have this on, it's not on by default. We're gonna make sure that keep UV and edit mode mesh selection in sync, okay? And that's important because what that does is it lets us um, see everything at once, okay? And, and by having that, we can just press B here and drag across, make sure we have everything selected. And we can just scale this down and move it around. Then we'll hit A to deselect, B to grab this, and S to scale it down, and G lets us move it around, okay? So we're gonna bring this over here, and we're gonna select that with B, and then G to move it up here. We're just gonna put them right in the center. And we can do this with this low polygon model, uh, where we're not really making full use of our entire um, texture, because we're 16 by 16 pixels. It's really not a big deal, okay? If we were, you know, if we did have like a 256 by 256 image, it would be essential that we had everything squeezed in here as tight as possible. But as you can see with this tree, we really don't have much to it, okay? We just have these two separate pieces. And we've set up these extra colors here so that if we wanted, we could literally just make another version of this where all we did was select everything and bring it down here. And now we have a totally different tree, okay? So we have that option. All right, now that we have those set there and we have our uh, image behind our UV, this doesn't actually set the UV to the model, okay? It's just for reference, all right? So now we know what it would, where it would be on our UV texture, but now we need to apply the texture in here so that we can actually see it in action and make sure there's no issues with it, which there, there shouldn't be based on what we see here. So what we'll do is we'll go over here and we're gonna create a new material and we're just gonna say, you know, hit a plus here, new, and we'll just name it tree material. All right, and then we need to apply texture to that. So we'll come over here to the texture and we're gonna say new and we'll say tree texture. 
And then right down here where we have this new open, this is actually where you select your image, okay? We're going to say open image. And we're going to travel to where our texture is and we have our tree texture PNG here. And so now we see that we have this texture here. If we come back to material, we see the texture applied to the material. And if we were to go to render, we would actually see now that we have this texture on our tree. And it looks good. Now if all you see is something black here, that's because over here in world settings, you don't have environmental lighting on, okay? And that's when you get this, all right? So environmental lighting becomes very useful, especially for these flat color, low polygon objects because it lets you see, you know, the angles in here. It gives you lighting from all around. It's just a really nice tool to have turned on so that you can check it out after you've applied the texture. And we've created our first low polygon asset and we've modeled it and textured it. And the next thing we'll do in the next video is we'll move on to setting up the light map UV, which is entirely different, but very important, especially in a low polygon scenario where you don't have moving branches and trees, where you are gonna wanna use baked lighting. Now the method we just went over was a texturing method that you use basically all the time. What you can do also is material only, okay? And for the material only method, we will just real quickly select this whole upper area and we'll come over here to our materials. And we can just call this one tree canopy. And we have that selected. We'll just assign that there. And we could just pick a color here. We could say we want it to be, it'll be that green right now. Um, and I've already pre-selected these groups here. So I'll just select this. We'll go to trunk, select the trunk. And we'll come back here and we'll create a new one. And we'll assign that. And we'll call this trunk and we will make this trunk a brownish color it doesn't have to be perfect and so we could do it this way as well it is important to know that this is a method that is available to you and is very simple very quick you simply select the faces assign a material and color the material and then when you save this and export it as fbx and bring it in unreal engine 4 it'll have these materials associated to it if you appreciate the content, you can help support this channel on patreon.com slash toxicitygamedev. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see more. There's a lot to come. Peace.